All right, we are back. We are back. We got our next guest on the line. Uh, once again, it's our, actually our second appearance here on ATG Radio. It's always an honor and a privilege to have her on the uh, line. She is a boxing legend. She's returning to the ring. Uh, we already spoke to her opponent, but she's returning to the ring in Denmark on April 13th, fighting for the Unified World Female Welterweight Championship. In all right, she is a former multi-time world champion. Without further ado, the knockout, the beautiful, the ass-kicking Miss Mia St. John. Mia, how are you doing tonight? Hi, good. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure. You know, we couldn't, you know, this is a, a humongous show for, for women's boxing here tonight. We couldn't leave you out of it. You got a huge fight. You've done so much for this sport. You know, as, you know, you heard, as we were going to tell you here, we spoke to your opponent on the 13th, the champion. Uh, she had nothing but the utmost respect for you, but she said she's going to put a hurting on you come the 13th in Denmark. <laughs> well, that's nothing new. I mean, that's what everybody says. So I'm used to it. 64, 63 fights later, I'm used to that. You mentioned the last time that we had you on the, on the show, uh, you know, we spoke to you before, uh, you right after Christy Martin fight. Um, about a, a couple weeks before your fight, maybe a month before your fight with Tiffany, Tiffany Juno, you said win, lose, or draw. You said it on the show. I know every fighter says this. You said win, lose, or draw. Tiffany Juno is most likely going to be your last fight. Obviously, you know that was. Uh, I guess I guess that was baloney. But what what was it to <laughs> keep going? I mean, you, you had a great fight with you know, uh, Tiffany, close fight. But what was it to keep going? You know. I have to be honest with you. Um, it's what keeps every fighter going. It's um, It all boils down to the money. Every fighter has a price. And um, you can talk any fighter into fighting again if the price is right. You know, even I spoke to Lennox Lewis not that long ago. At, um, I forgot where we, where we were at. I think it was the... The WBC uh, Hublo, convention, the, the Hublo. Hublo Lodge. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hublo. And he said, I said, are you sure you're not going to come back? And he said, you know, if they offered me the right amount, he would. And and that's every fighter. Every fighter, it, I'm sorry, but it, it's true. It boils down to money. If you pay us the right amount, we'll say yes. So I say yes. I, I retire after every fight, and I do. But hey, if you come to me with enough money, um, sure. <laughs> hey, is this, is this is this lucrative enough? I mean, is this one of them fights? I mean, she's obviously considered uh, the one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. She's undefeated. She's got a tremendous um, fan base following in Europe. I mean, you're going to be well received when you go over there. Is is it? enough to say, like, you know what, if this is the last one, this is this is the most money I can make right now. Is this the most money right. that's fight for you right now? It, right. Point. It's it's um, it's not what it used to be in the 90s, like when, when me and Christy were making six figures. Um, you know, now I only make around 50000 So, um, yes, it's still the most any woman's going to see. Like, the majority of the women out here are making, what, $2,500 <laughs> for a fight, um, for a title fight. And um, so it's the most that women are seeing. But is it enough to keep me going? Well, if you combine that with my endorsements and with everything else I'm doing, um, like the commentating and, yeah, it becomes lucrative. Now, if you take away the fighting, um, it makes it harder to get these endorsements and these other jobs. You know, um, if I do finally retire, um, it, w- it will make it harder. I mean, but eventually that day is going to come. That day is going to come when my phone no longer rings. Um, I don't know when that is, but, but there is going to come a day, obviously. Well, you know, me, I'll tell you this, you know, before one of my co-hosts take over and ask you a couple questions, you know, it's always, you're not one of them, them, them boxes that go in there and stink off the joint. I mean, every time you go in there to fight, I'm really excited about this fight. I mean, you fought the best of the best, you know, throughout your career. Everybody who is considered great 
from when you started your professional career in the late 90s up until now, you fought the best of the best. And mm-hmm. Cecilia Breakus is the last one, and I and I like that. But um, one of my co-hosts, I know they wanted to jump in there. I don't want to formally introduce them, so I'm going to let them uh, tangle with each other to see who jumps in there first. Okay. Hey, hey Mia. How are you? Hi. Hi. Uh, you, you you were talking about uh, you know about the money, but how much? Uh, just an honest question, mate, or uh, honest answer if you can give me one. How much is it about legacy now? I mean, you got Bernard Hopkins at 48. You know, the guy's made quite a bit of money in his career. He could probably, you know, I mean, he ain't going to pass up a big payday, but he's doing a lot for the legacy as well. You're not far behind. I mean, you're you're, well, you're younger than him, but, you know, how much is it is, is legacy for you? Well, I mean, let's look at legacy. I, I feel like history's already been written. Like, I'm already in the history books, and there, and you can't change that. It's It's like, did my win over Christy Martin – make me all of a sudden a bigger legend than Chrissy Martin? No. Um, no, Chrissy Martin is going to go down in history as the most recognized female fighter in the world in our generation. Um, and that's not going to change. If you look at all the fighters like Muhammad Ali, you look at the end of his career and the losses at his end, the end of his career, Sugar Ray Leonard, um, all the fighters, all the greats, like Roy Jones Jr., you know, that all ended their careers. Oscar De La Hoya, you know, with losses. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. I could go on and on and on and on. Do you, does that ruin their legacy? Like, what do you remember about Muhammad Ali's career? We don't remember the end. You remember the glory days, right? And that's the same with me and Christy Martin. You're going to remember the late 90s when she was on the Tyson cards, when I was on the De La Hoya cards, the Playboy, um, that's what people are going to remember, you know. Unfortunately, you know, of course I want them to remember that I went on to fight, like you said, the best. Um, and and I did a lot with with everything that, you know, like the money I made, the fame I made, I, I did a lot with that. I gave back to the community. I started a foundation for inner city kids, for Latinos here in the U.S. and the, in Mexico. Are people going to remember that? Probably not. Unfortunately, they're going to remember, you know, our heyday, right? Um, but that that's with all fighters. Like Roy Jones, you're not going to remember the end of his career. You're going to remember, remember what he was. Um, so it, it's, not, it's no longer about legacy. That's over and done with. My history has already been made, and, and you can't. Well, no one can change that. It kind of depends on this fight, too, because I mean, I'm not sure I have to look back, but I believe if you do beat, you know, Cecilia, that you might be the the oldest. And I hate to say this to a woman, but the oldest, uh, you know, women's boxing champion ever. Well, I already accomplished that you when I fought Christy Martin and won the title. I became Bernard is now, you know, he's the oldest um, to win a major title, but I became the oldest female to win a major title. Now, until someone comes along and breaks that record, I'm still the oldest female to win a major title. But I'm being Bernard broke his own record. That's, you know, in, in men's boxing, you could break your own record again. You could kind of be considered, you know. I could. I could break my record again. Um, yeah, of course. Anything can happen. You know, that's the interesting thing about boxing is you never know. Like, yeah, I'm going to her territory. I'm fighting under her promotion. These are her promoters. So they're going to be her judges, her officials, um, her fans. Um, everything is set up for me to lose, right? I'm, I'm fighting under her weight because I'm 10 pounds under her weight. Um, everything is all the cards are stacked against me. But that doesn't mean anything. One punch That's and it way your all be over. A lot in your career, you've had, you've had the same obstacles and you overcame them. So, I mean, uh, still, Yeah, and look but, at the but, Christy Martin fight. I was, I was supposed to lose that fight because the promoter had a deal with her for after the fight. So she came out of the winning corner, so the judges knew who was supposed to win. Um... I came out of the losing corner. Um, well, shit happens, and I actually won the fight. So there, you know, you don't know. You just don't but, know. 
you, you mentioned the fact that you know every boxer has a price, and you know most boxers or any boxer would come back if the price is right. But there's also many boxers that finally know when their day is. You know, they finally get tired of uh, of boxing. Do you feel that you'll ever get tired of the sport and just basically step away, <laughs> even if a payday comes? Yeah, it, and so many fighters do. Like so many fighters will go back in the ring even though they don't really want to. Their heart's not in it anymore, but the payday's good, so eh, let me go back in and, you know, just do the best I can. All fighters do that. Um, really, fighters only stop going in the ring, honestly, when the phone stops ringing. You know, because I, I get called all the time, and, and usually the paydays are, you know, they're they're pretty low, offers, but if I get a great offer like this one, I'm going to take it, and most fighters will, but um, even if we have lost that oomph, you know, um, which it does get less and less every year, you know, I've been fighting for 16 years professional, so yeah, it gets less and less, your hunger, just like Bernard Hopkins says, He's not as hungry anymore as his opponents, obviously, because we lose that as we get older. We don't have that anymore. Our adrenaline slows down. Um, and so you just have to figure out other ways to get around that, you know, more um, tactful ways and more um, strategy. Um, but to answer your question, um, yeah, of course there's going to be a day when when I – I probably feel like, uh, like I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. But right now, I still, I still love it so much, and I accept that there's so many things I can no longer do because of my age. And and just like Hopkins, you just you've got to find other ways to work around it. Well, I got a feeling. I mean, this Hopkins girl's like 15 retired. years younger than me. <laughs> well, I got a feeling when Hopkins does retire, he's still going to keep. You know, he's already part of Golden Boy. He's probably going to be training guys. He's going to, you know, he's going to have some other role in boxing. Is that something you always look forward to? Do you, do you want to step up and be a trainer one day when your career is over, or manager? Or oh, like hell no! I am never going to be a trainer. You know, I I took a job um, commentating for K1, um, and I, and I don't know if you remember K1, but they were, you know, huge back in the nineties. Anyway, they've made their comeback and. I started commentating for them, and I love commentating almost as much as I love fighting. Not as much as I love fighting, but almost. And so that's where I see myself as I'm going to stay in the fight game, but I'm probably going to be on the other end talking about it rather than being in the ring. And and training people, no. I mean, I I work with kids in the inner city for free through my foundation, I don't think I'd ever want to do that for pay. You know, that's not something that even interests me whatsoever. Well, thanks, Mia. I appreciate it, and uh, good luck. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Elliot. Hey, Mia, how you doing? This is Elliot. Hi. Yeah, I want to... Hi, Elliot. Uh, good, good. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I want to ask you, back in 2008, you had your first and only uh, fight in mixed martial arts, and now girls and, and women in particular in, in the UFC are now considered, uh, you know, now they're being considered, they're made an ending and all that stuff. Do you ever uh, consider resuming your MMA career? <laughs> my, you know, my ex-husband asked me that. Um... He said, gosh, it's so big now, Mia. You know, and I went to Ronda Rousey's fight, um, and that was very exciting. I said, you know, I swear, if, if I went down nowadays on the mat, like I did that back in 2008, 2009, mm-hmm. if I went on the mat now, it would be like that commercial, that commercial I've fallen and I can't get up. Because <laughs> I seriously have problems, like when I'm stretching now, I have problems getting up off the floor. Like, no. I will never, ever do MMA. Not at this age. You know, I I would love to, but I just physically couldn't, even if I wanted to. I couldn't. 
because you know I would do anything. Like like I said, you could pay me just about you could pay me to do just about anything, you know, within reason um, when it comes to fighting. Um, but MMA, I just physically couldn't do it. Gosh, I wish I could because I would love to get in that right now. Yeah, it's a hot sport right now among the you know the women, and now they're going to hold the first ever Tough Enough uh, featuring two female uh, tr- uh, trainers. So you know it's, it's getting big for the women. Oh yeah, it's huge. And when I went, I went to her fight um, recently, and the whole stadium was just—they were going crazy. I mean, they, the fans just love her. Mm-hmm. Would you ever like to close the chapter between you and Chrissy Martin and have a trilogy? (laughs) That's what we want to do. And I actually offered her that. I said, after the fight, I said, um, you know, I beat you, or you beat me the first one, I beat you this one, and and I will give you the chance to fight me again. And she said, yes. Then she said no. Then she said yes. Then she said no. And now she's back. To, okay, probably. So we'll see. I mean, she she doesn't she wants to retire, but there's a part of her that you know can't give it up, and which I totally understand. And so you know we'll see if it ever happens. If not, I I won't be sad without it. You know. Yeah. And. How much more do you think you have in the sport? You know, I know that we mentioned this earlier. You're 46 years old. Like, how much? How many fights do you think? Wait, you wait, wait. What'd you say? How old am I? No, no. How, how much you more do you have? Wait, how did you, wait, how did you oh. say? How old did you say I was? I, I said 46. Oh, oh my God. you just ruined the whole interview. Me, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hang up now. <laughs> oh my goodness! You know, you know what? I, 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 broke the number, I broke the number one rule: never mention a woman's age. I oh. know. And you know what's even worse is I'm not even 46; I'm 45. So when you make when you make a 40 something year old woman older than she is, it's it's huge. <laughs> that year is huge. <laughs> well, well, Mia, I tell you what: you still look like you're 25. Does that help? Well, thank you. I certainly don't feel it. My ex-husband said, don't worry, Mia, you're only as old as you feel. And I said, okay, great. That makes me about 100 (laughs) because I feel like it. Yeah, everything's harder. Everything's harder. And you said you had some endorsement deals. I know that back in – Back in the late '90s, you had like a Vobix and or uh, model deals. Are those still in the picture? Yes. And can I plug one, please? Sure thing. Sure Great. Thing. So my new endorsement is Uplifting '90s, um, and of course, it is just what it sounds like. It's lingerie for the evening for women who want to look sexy but yet still be comfortable. Um, and you can actually see pictures of my my '90s on. Um, upliftingnighties.com or you can go see them all on my Twitter at Mia St. John Boxer um, or of course on Facebook um, or on my website miastjohn.com but yeah so upliftingnighties.com oh, I'm on it I'm on it I'm on it right now I'm, okay uh, go on my go on my Twitter and you can see my last um, or my Facebook no go on my Twitter my last the blue one that I just posted. Last well, post, I'll take you right there. All right, we got that. Mia, I want to listen. I want to get back. I know. I know the other guys are they're talking about the past. I, I got to stick on the future. I mean, Cecilia Blake, who's you know, the the thing is, is what a lot of people are asking for. It's in a way, and you know, not believing you out of this, you have the, the opportunity to be a spoiler in this. They want to see Cecilia Blake, Holly Holm, someone that you fought in the past. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be a spoiler? on the 13th of April. Is, is Mia St. John the spoiler becoming the unified champion? Something you haven't done yet. That's another thing we failed to mention. Uh, Cecilia has three titles, WBA, WBO, WBC welterweight titles. Unified, undisputed welterweight champion. Do you plan on spoiling that, that women's mega fight between the number one, number two, pound for pound? 
Oh, I would love to. I would love to. Of course, that's the goal. That's the goal. Um, and, you know, because I don't understand what the, the big deal is about that fight anyway. Nobody in the U.S., there's, there's only one state that knows who Holly Holm is. That's New Mexico. That's it. She's not a national celebrity or, you know, she doesn't have national recognition. So I don't understand what the big deal is. Um, and that's exactly um, why this fight between me and Cecilia was so fitting, was that it was a great marketing idea. Um, it's amazing publicity for us. So, or, you know, especially for Europe over there, because uh, the U.S., you know, still doesn't know Cecilia yet. But it was a great idea. And, um, yeah, I definitely plan on being the spoiler. But either way, either way, I, I feel, you know, like I've already won. Like I've already won in this game. Like no matter what happens, I've already won. You know, I've already had my career. My career's great. It was great. And um, the rest is just going to be icing on the cake. And I mean, I'd love to see it. I mean, I know it's like, yes, you're not the first person to uh, say that about Holly Holm. You know, she's not known outside of New Mexico. The majority of her fights, you know, take a place in in, uh, in New Mexico. I mean, that's, I mean, that's something like this. You know, you go in there, uh, you and, – and considering this, me, I know you're never – you know, you're never uh, uh, the underdog in this case, but a lot of people are considering you. You mentioned the, the whole, all the intangibles under her rules, her weight, her hometown, her judges. You know, you got to obviously go out there and, and destroy her to get the victory. But right. Then, I mean, I am the underdog. What, what, what a rematch with Holly Holm. I mean, for what, like, you know, I know the guys were talking legacy, and, you know, obviously the money's there. Is, is going back, like, you win here against Cecilia – is going back to, you know, obviously going back to New Mexico to fight, is that another lucrative fight, you know, to go there and, and rematch Holly Holm? No, I I mean, I honestly don't think that that's something. Um, I mean, if she wants to fight outside of New Mexico, then I, I feel like I already went there and fought her. And she's just going to have to, suck it up and leave New Mexico. If she ever wants to do anything bigger than be a, a, a big fish in a small pond, you know, she's going to have to come out of New Mexico and start building her name. I don't think I would go there for a second time. Oh, a lot of people have, a lot, a lot of people have said the uh, same thing. It actually, you know, in this way, I kind of, I know this isn't the case right here, but I kind of consider this uh, like a mini tournament. You know, you and Cecilia, uh, Holly Holm is also getting ready to fight uh, against Mary McGee. Um, do you have any thoughts or, or any type of prediction on that fight? I mean, that's, they, once again, that's a fight that's taking place in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but Mary McGee, uh, you know, pretty solid record, 20-1. and one. Do you uh, mm-hmm. have any predictions on that fight? Yeah, I, you know, of course I think um, Holly will win that fight. Um, you know, it's just the obvious. I mean, Holly's a better fighter. Um she, Holly's a great fighter. There, I'm not going to take that away from her. She really is. She's probably, she is one of the best fighters, if not the best, in female boxing. Um, the only thing with Holly is that, like you said, like she just won't leave New Mexico. Um, that's her only downfall. But she is like undoubtedly like there's there's you can't take away her skill like she's she's got it and and I'm sure she'll she'll definitely I mean Mary's a tough girl but um, Holly's just you know she's just out of her league. No, that's why I said it's a big actually this year you know uh, in, in women's boxing it's a big year. Um, me, I'm I'm super stoked. You know we're gonna find a live stream. Uh, probably illegally to watch your fight, and I'm looking forward to it. Mia, this is you know I, I commend you for you know for one. You mentioned this. Your name is is etched in history. Uh, definitely, when they do open up for the the, the Hall of Fame, you're definitely first ballot. Uh, you've done so much, and every every woman boxer that I've spoke to, even the male boxers that speak on women's boxing, uh, they always commend you. They always you know 
say that you've led the asphalt for where they are today, especially the current ones. And I hope, you know, Thank I hope, you. you know, I know one thing we're going to, you know, we're going to get, you know, we are guaranteed out of you on uh, April 13th in Denmark, you and Cecilia Breaku. It's going to be a great fight. Uh, you, Thank you, you, you. You, you tend to bleed. You tend to make your opponent bleed. I like it. I'm a fan of that. And that's why I said, I guess, you know, me, I want to, um, you know, for one, thank you, obviously, for coming on the show. I want to also wish you all the best. I'm not going to wish you luck. You know, it's the skill, your training, what you're preparing yourself to get into now. I wish you all the best going out there. Obviously, as a, uh, an American from the United States, I am, I'm rooting for you. You know, I hope you bring it back home, uh, the World <laughs> Championship. You know, that's it's history right there for you, more history. And uh, looking forward to it. But uh, Yeah, yeah I gotta ask, thank I you gotta so ask, much. I got to ask you this one final thing. I followed Mia on Twitter at Mia St. John Boxer. Um, Mia, for your fans out there listening, you know, tonight, mega women's boxing show right here on ATG Radio. Throw uh, a message out there to your fans and, and haters, if you would, please. Oh, <laughs> fans and haters. Um, yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for um, just following my career all these years and, um, you know, I I still read everybody's emails and um, and I really appreciate. I can't respond to everybody, but I do read them, and it does mean a lot to me. Like it makes my day every time I see this stuff. So, um, I just want to thank them so much for just you know being around all these years, and to the haters, thank you so much for hate still hating me. Because if you still hate me after 16 years, you're still hating on me, and there are haters. Thank you because you keep me you keep me going too. You're doing something right. You're doing something right. So yeah, Mia, you know we we appreciate you uh, joining us again. We'd love to get you back on again, talk some more boxing, which it's always yeah. a great honor. Yeah, thanks for you. having me. But wish y'all we'll let you go back to being busy. Enjoy your uh, enjoy the rest of your uh, enjoy the rest of your Monday night. Okay, thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thanks, Mia. God bless. Take care.